everyone! In this video, we will be discussing the Neolithic Revolution, also known as the Agricultural Revolution. The techniques and objectives for this lesson are 1a. We will identify the dis and describe causes and effects of the development of agriculture. We will also summarize the impact of farming on the creation of civilizations, and we will analyze the influence of geography on the development of civilizations. By the time that we are done with this lesson, you will have used a Venn diagram to compare and contrast life before and after the Neolithic Revolution, and also used a T-chart to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of the Neolithic Revolution. Alright, so before agriculture came about, humans depended on nature for survival. Um, these humans were called hunters and gatherers, and they lived off wild plants and animals that they could find in their environment. Um, they had what we call a nomadic lifestyle. That means that they moved around from place to place looking for their food. As you can see in the painting, um, this depicts what people did for survival during the uh, before the Neolithic Revolution. Um, you can see a group of hunters back here. Um, they usually hunted in, in groups and made it easier to kill large prey like the mammoth. Um, women and children did the, hunt, the gathering of uh, fruits and berries and other plants that they could eat. Uh, they used art to express themselves, although they didn't have a written form of communication, they did use symbols uh, for expression and um, we do know that they had simple tools mostly used for farm uh, for hunting purposes and they even used fire to cook their meals when agricultural er, agriculture came about we call that the Neolithic Revolution it was a change um, that was the introduction of agriculture and the domestication of animals. It occurred about 8,000 years ago and uh, people decided that it was easier to grow their own food than it was to hunt uh, and gather. And so they began to farm and also raise and breed animals. Grains were grown in different parts of the world. The most common ones were wheat, barley, rice, and corn. These were fairly easy to grow and they uh, fed a large group of people. Um, they also realized that they could tame the wild animals in their surroundings by fencing them in. Um, they could also breed the best animals to pr produce really strong and healthy animals. And um, most of the animals that they used were goats, cattle, pigs, and chickens. Um, they used those for meat or for milk and even eggs. Um, soon they realized that they didn't need all the food that they were producing and so they generated a surplus um, that means that they had extra food and so they had to develop ways in which to store this extra food for future purposes this stability of food led to the development of villages people had to stay in one place in order to tend to their crops and take care of their animals so they could no longer be nomadic um, they began to build permanent settlements and they settled along rivers because rivers provided water of course and also very fertile soil for them to grow their crops um, the population began to rise quickly. Whenever there is an abundance of food, that means that more uh, population can be supported. And so you end up uh, with 90 million humans opposed to 9 million before the development of agriculture. With the extra time that people have, because they have a steady food supply, they are able to devote their time to developing technology that is going to improve their life. And so they develop things like the ox-driven plow, which is what you see here. They can use animals to help with the cultivation of crops, and it makes farming more efficient. They also develop the wheel, and so this helps with transportation of people and goods from one place to another. And they even develop a loom. This is so that they can uh, weave cloth that is more comfortable and also more quick uh, to make clothing. They also focus a lot of their technology on farming methods because they wanted to ensure they had good crops to sustain the population. And so they begin to use fertilizers to help their crops grow and they also develop systems of irrigation. Irrigation means that they uh, is the watering of land in preparation for agriculture. And so uh, these early civilizations began to dig canals um, 
between their crops and rivers and that delivered water from the rivers to their crops so they didn't necessarily have to be right next to a river in order to irrigate their crops. In your notebooks you're going to create a Venn diagram like the one you see here and you will compare the uh, lifestyle of humans before and after the Neolithic Revolution. As you can see I already started this right here. Things that both uh, people before the Neolithic Revolution had in common with the people after the Neolithic Revolution you would list that there and then um, the differences would go here on these sides. Um, when you are finished with the Venn diagram, you will be given two readings and using the information you find on those readings, you will create a T-chart like the one here. And under these subheadings, advantages and disadvantages, you will list examples from those readings. And lastly, your journal entry for this lesson. Based on the lecture and the readings, do you think the Neolithic Revolution was good for mankind? Make sure you support your answer with at least two examples. And remember that your journal entries must be five to six sentences long. Alright, thanks for watching.